Welcome to Raw Impressions. Monday's music mini episode. Mini, 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 mini. Tiny, 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 tiny. Sippy, sip, sip, sippy, sippy. Mini, mini, tiny, tiny. Monday or Tuesday. I like this thing. You like it? Topo Chico Tangerine. Oh, that's what it is. Ginger extract. I felt a little extra. Yeah, a little zing. Yeah, there's a zing in there. Uh huh. I was like, why do I feel like I just had sushi? And, oh, it's that ginger. Topo Chico is now owned by the Coca Cola Company. Maybe it always has been. Hmm. But. Three percent juice. Guess who's going on tour tomorrow? Lou Barlow. It's not Adele. No. Adele is, Adele is staying home with Izzy. Yeah. I'm going to hang out here in Greenfield, Massachusetts. Running around, camp drop off, pick up. Summer in, in a small town. <sighs> Summer Crocheting. in a small town. Summer in a small town. We're a city. Officially a city. Smallish city. Very small city. The college is now a university. <laughs> Which college? Uh, Westfield State College, where I grew up in Westfield. Uh huh. Is now Westfield Uni- University. Oh. Don't know why. What's the diff? Don't know. I don't either. I'm sure it has something to do with numbers. College and university. I always thought those two were like interchangeable, but maybe not. Don't think they are. How about I'm not going to worry about it right now? How about I'm not going to worry about it? (laughs) That one's low on my priority list. (laughs) I'm not going to want to think about that. (laughs) I'm thinking more about the heat and the sun and the swimming play date that I have coming up this afternoon. So which, always a, always a source of low level anxiety for you. Yeah, swimming. I mean it's it's yeah. Now that yeah. Izzy can swim in the deep end. She won't stop, so <laughs> she just won't stop. Yeah. Tossing those rings down to the bottom, diving in, getting them, retrieving them. Give me all your tiny Tuesday. Or if I finish it editing it today, it will be Monday. John's on his way. John Davis is on his way. He's John. in route right now. Is he? Is he driving? Well, he's in he's in Boston, so he's only. Oh, he came from Boston. I thought he was coming from New York. I believe he's hanging with his his sis right now in Boston. Oh, okay, okay. So then, yeah, he maybe he hasn't left yet. I believe he's hanging with his sister. <laughs> Hi. Hi. You had quite a little adventure this weekend. You were such a silly goose, and you brought oh the wrong. Oh my God. Um. I paperwork a, type thing uh, to to the airport. I took my passport card to the airport in Newark, which is, by the way, four hours away. Yeah, that's a different state. Yeah, that's where we have we to go. We don't live in New Jersey. I've got to drive all the way down there to fly out because it's so much cheaper. And Newark has you know, <sighs> direct flights around the yeah. North America and, yeah. and, the, and the world, for that matter. True. Um, my ancestors settled... New Newark, Newark, on Newark. On your mom's side. On my mom's side, Newark, New Jersey. Wow. They settled it. You have deep roots in Jersey. I'm deeply American. Wow, you're just like Springsteen and Pete Yorn. And I, know. I don't else? have I don't have who an American flag New sticker. Jersey. <laughs> I don't have an American flag sticker on my guitar, but I am American. Yeah. Deep. Deep. Sixteen hundred shit. Wow. I think, of course. I'm not. I'm not really known for my grasp of facts, mm. and I'm also not known for my grasp of details, as evidenced 
by grabbing the wrong... No, I was like, I'm going to take this passport card. I'm so smart. And you, I think you did feel almost like a little bit like, look at me, I have this other option. I did. Other people don't really have it, but I have it. I got the card and the and the book. Right. I'm so smart. Look and then at I, me. Before I went, I'm like, I'm just going to make sure this works. So I flipped it over and I just saw, you know, good for travel to Canada, Mexico, and the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. What I didn't look at was, was just below it. The and following the same, line, The sure. same, you know, almost the same line. Mm-hmm. You know, just below it, you know, there's really no excuse. It says, not good for international air travel. You were flying to Canada. I was flying to Canada. I knew that. I thought the card would work. Uh, and the, the uh, gate agent told me. She looked at me almost just like, this isn't going to work. And she almost like backed up, like ready, ready for me to just go, what the fuck? You know, like, but I just, I just went... I went, I went just docile. I was like, okay. And, and that looked, would be my fault. And I looked at the guys. <laughs> I looked at the guys. We were all assembled around the counter. I'm like, guess I'm not going to Canada with you guys. <laughs> but then I had to figure out how to like get my passport down there. And I had. You made it. You made it to Canada. I made it to Canada the next day. But boy, I think I, I, <laughs> I had to, get, I had to get up at 3 a.m. To go to... And then Ab- you had to stay in a hotel in New Jersey Oh, my Jersey God, I stayed in this night. hotel in New Jersey. I'm like, oh, God. Oh, you were so hungry. Oh, so you were like, hungry. where do I go eat? And But um, yeah. our friend to the band... Yes, Ian. Ian St. George, who is... I wanted to point this out. Yeah. Ian St. George, his name sounds like he's in Spinal Tap. Oh. Ian St. George, don't oh. you think so? Uh, Nigel Tufnell, Ian St. George. It sounds like he's in Spinal Tap. I don't know. But he's, but he's, a, he's a good old man. It sounds man. like he's a hero, is what he's I a, think. <laughs> he's a hero. He's a, he's a, he's a, he a, pulled through for us. Thank he's you, He's a young Ian. man from Western Massachusetts, born and bred. Is he? Huge music fan. Yeah. He drove down. He gave me my passport, and he and I had a wonderful dinner together. Fantastic. Where we just chit-chatted about music. We really bonded over the Brown Acid series. Oh, which is a compilation of, of obscure private pressing hard rock from the nineteen late sixties and and seventies. Fantastic! That sounds like a, oh, I love it so much, and he loves yeah. it as much as I do. And we were actually oh, we were adorable. actually swapping notes on p- specific songs, which is super fun. And I don't oh. I don't do it enough. I don't Gosh. have enough bro time. Where I was like, gonna say, is there uh, you know because this you is what. literally bro. This is a lot when of my, you can't watch porn. This is the next best thing, right? It's like when you can't watch porn. Yeah, when when <laughs> porn's not available, you're like, "Hey, where's a bro where I can talk music?" I really, really need to watch music. I'm not saying watching porn together. I'm saying just just well, we, used, just doing actually, something. I used to we used to talk uh, like I used to talk about porn with other men. Back when I was in my twenties, it was fun. We used to sit around and watch it. I mean, we didn't. We I know like, I had friends. We weren't having a circle jerk or anything, but we were just talking about porn. It was just somehow like part of the the wallpaper of a, of a, any sort of hipster apartment. You know? Sure, I know I, the same thing happened when I was in my late teens, early twenties. It was almost like something people did. They got together. Maybe it was also because oh. it's like, oh, we're it was a novelty back then. Yeah, too. we're adults now. No one can stop us, and we're gonna put yeah. this VHS in and watch watch this crazy thing and it's like yeah there was almost ooh, no it was like, it, it, well, there was no there was no sex <laughs> no, there was attached no sex. to it there was no we would ex- just sit around like drinking sprite and like yeah, like look at ron jeremy as if it was whatever it was crazy but yeah so anyway i'm just saying that like i think that men love getting into like the nitty gritty yeah, and i rarely songs. do it you know i really don't i mean and when i hang out with dinosaur jr it's like they really, honest to God, all they want to do is talk about like the Rolling Stones, yeah, and drummers and drumsticks <laughs> and and drums and like and they don't and none of them, I, none of my friends, my brothers, my musical brothers, and mm-hmm. my bands have the the love, the deep love of obscure garage rock, hard rock, you know, like bands that nobody knows about, yeah. And there's been a recent uncovering of all of these hard rock bands from the from the late '60s and early '70s. Uh, these and it's the stuff. Some of the stuff is so awful; it's amazing, and some of it is so amazing. Yeah, it's like shockingly good. And you know, they, wow. these were all bands that it's much like the '60s music that I love. The garage rock. They mm-hmm. were, there's a lot of compilations. I have a lot of them. But my new thing now is just listening, just going through and listening to like hundreds of these songs from this one particular compilation called brown acid mm-hmm. look it up if anybody if, if you like 
If you want to hear a bunch of teenagers from fucking, I don't know, Iowa, like where is this compilation available? Is it on Spotify? It's on Spotify. It's all on Spotify. Hundreds of songs. I swear to God, if you want to hear a bunch of teenagers trying to be deep purple in 1972, (laughs) that's where you go. And like, I like to hear people trying to, I almost like people trying to be these classic rock bands yeah. rather than hearing the classic rock bands again. I want to yeah, hear... Let's I want to hear... Let's, let's hear some fresh... Exactly. I yeah. want to hear the missteps. I want to hear the bizarre recordings. I want to hear... I want to hear the mistakes. I want to hear... And then I also want to hear these these moments of absolute perfection and beauty that mm-hmm. did occur. I'm sure. That, that nobody knows about. Anyway. Right. The magical moments. Oh, I didn't believe... I, See, I start tingling. So I was ting- having, well, Ian should be on the podcast. You guys could just sit and do a hair. special brown acid uh, uh, episode where you just talk about your bring, favorite. Yeah, bring Ian St. George, not I, a member of Spinal Tap. Just right. a guy, just a kid named just Ian St. George, a local yeah, hero local who hero. brought me my fucking passport. Thank you, Ian. In Newark. Oh, oh thank you. Oh, my God. And then, I but I, you know, after when I handed her the card and she was like, this doesn't work. Like, I feel like <laughs> I entered a, a stupid world after that. Like, I was just like, <laughs> I'm a stupid guy. And then I was like, how am I? And then I got a, a, a hotel and I'm like, how do I get to the hotel? And I literally like, I like couldn't understand any signs that I saw. I couldn't, I had no idea. To, and I'm like, I, I mean, there was a way to how get. How do I move around? There was a way to get to the hotel for free, but I couldn't fucking figure that out. And there was good reason because Newark is actually, it's, although it's a fun, I think when you get inside the airport, when you mm-hmm. finally make it to the airport, mm-hmm. it's actually quite it's quite sophisticated. They've really revamped the whole airport, but still on the outside, it's quite confusing. So when in the morning <laughs> at 3 a.m., I had to figure uh, out how to get to the fucking terminal. And I got up at three and I'm like, okay, my flight's at six. I have plenty of time. But first I had to wait for the shuttle because it had just left. So I'm sure. like, I had to wait a half an hour for the shuttle. God damn. Yeah. Three, just sitting in a fucking hotel lobby at like 3.30. twice an hour shuttle. 3.30 oh, in the morning brutal. in Newark. Yeah. And the funny thing too is like the, the terminal was with, I mean, literally within a stone's throw. It right. Was like I could almost see it, but for the parking garage that was obscured it. But, you know, had I been able to walk, it would have been a seven minute walk. Hmm. Right. But instead... It was a Sorry. it was a hotel shuttle <laughs> ride, a hotel shuttle ride that then deposited us at the uh, at the air train, and I'm like, okay, the air train is definitely. Good. Wouldn't you think this? Listen, the air train. You're like, oh, that'll take me to the terminal, right? <laughs> Sorry, I had to have a sip. I don't know. I, I don't well, the answer is, of course, you would you think that it would go to the terminal. Okay, sure, yes. You think it would go snug right into the terminal, like bam, there you are. Wouldn't. Well, it didn't. The, the, the point is, it didn't. It's an old train. They built it in like the 1970s. It's like as old well, as I guess a fucking my only thing- monorail at Disneyland. Sure. Anyway, okay. so, so, so yeah, so I got to the, did I, I don't even think I told you this. I got to the, then they delivered me to the air train. Then I got on the air train and then the air train isn't, is, is like broken or something. So it can only go two stops. So it can only go to terminal B. So they're, when you get to terminal B and they had people, there was no instructions anywhere. That's the other thing. The signage was like, do it yourself. Lacking. Huh? Wow. So I, so I finally, so we, I get on the air train and then, okay, so I finally make it two train rides to mm. get to terminal A, okay. quote unquote. So I get out of there and like we get out of the train and walk down some stairs. I'm like, okay, go into the terminal. I walk out. I'm outside. <laughs> I'm like, where's the terminal? Like, and then there was like a sign that had like a little walking man that said, you know, 12 minutes. Like, so I, I'm like, so oh. if you start walking, it's 12 minutes that way, or wait for the bus. <laughs> so then I got a bus to the terminal. Uh huh. But I did make it to the terminal. Gosh, you had quite a little adventure. Oh there. my god! Then I got my ticket. Mm-hmm. You know, I've got my ticket. I'm like, okay, I'm cool. Because I really didn't want to miss this show. Yeah. And it would be all my fault for missing. And I have yet to do this. I've yet to, like, miss a dinosaur show this way where it's, like, all my fucking fault. Good job. And these shows are You've important. You've played a lot of shows. Yeah, these shows are important. Like, we were playing Absolutely. the Calgary Stampede. We were playing right. this huge rodeo fair thing in Calgary. Which you said Al- is really old, right? It's been yeah, it's 100 years old. It's 100 years it's old. It's a huge institution. When we right. got there, it was amazing to find out where we were. And wow, what a weird privilege that was. Right. To be at the Calgary Stampede. Anyway. Yeah. So... I finally, I get, I get through, sec- well, I go to security, I hand the woman my ticket, and she goes, now don't freak out, <laughs> but you're supposed to be in Terminal A, and I'm like, yeah, but the, 
<laughs> or you're supposed to be in Terminal C. I'm oh, like, yeah, God. but my ticket said Terminal A. And they're like, well, but don't don't worry. Just go through here. Still go through security. You're not going to have to go through security again. But when you get downstairs, find Starbucks and right across from there, you're going to find another shuttle. <laughs> Wow. So I did, and I got on the shuttle. It was like it was Amazing. relatively easy, and it was it was there. It was waiting for me. I didn't have to wait for it. I got onto it, and then we fucking drove all the way across the t- tarmac. <laughs> I mean, all the way across, like like another like ten, <sighs> fifteen minute bus ride to get to Terminal A or oh, Terminal C, which is where the flight was leaving. And then I got on the flight, and everything was fine. You played, and you played the Stampede. And I and played the Stampede. Along with Soul Asylum. Along with Soul Asylum. Wonderful Minneapolis band. And, yeah, and before, Shout out. before we played, they played this this just endless playlist of the most, not obscure, because these, these songs were hits, but songs you have not heard. You're talking about Soul Asylum played them? No. The DJ. The venue. The oh, venue okay. played, yeah. played like deep, like not deep cuts, 90s deep cuts i'm talking about shit that was like huge hits like stone temple pilots better than ezra marcy's playground all this like ooh, yeah all of it actually i have to say boy nirvana had quite an influence on popular music in the 90s (laughs) you don't say yeah, I'm, but uh-huh. I mean, all this stuff like literally sounded just like Nirvana. Every hook of every fucking song <laughs> sounded like Nirvana, except for the Gin Blossoms, my my beloved Gin Blossoms. God, I know you love them I so much. I heard several Gin Blossom songs, and every time they happened, and then Jay started singing along to Gin Blossoms too. And I'm like, that's right, <laughs> Gin Blossoms. Oh my god! I'm not going to call them a guilty favorite, but I'm going to say I like. They're just a favorite. They no guilt. Are, they. And they were not, they did not sound like Nirvana. No. No. They sounded like a really great jangly power pop band. Yes. And I love the guy's voice. You're not so big fond on it. I, I, yeah, it's not, right. I, I I gotta, I gotta it's not s- my favorite. But, <laughs> yeah. and I also want to say, shout out to Bill Sullivan, if he ever hears this episode. Um, uh, yeah. TM, tour manager, right? For, for Soul, Soul Asylum. Asylum. Old friend of mine from Minneapolis. He yeah. used to run a very cool bar called the 400 the Bar. The 400 Bar was the kind of the bomb. It was a smaller yeah. club, but very like... small. Sebeda played there many times. Yeah. You saw Elliot Smith there. Multiple and you still, times, you, yeah. still ha- you still have like the ticket stub for your Elliot Smith I think shows. I might, yeah. Seeing Elliot at the 400 Bar must have been wonderful. I saw Cat Power there. That's the first time I saw her. But that's when I, the, my show with her, where it, I think it was for Moon Picks, I can't remember, and she had her back to us the whole time and was in the corner, and I was like, oh, no, is she okay? And then I also <laughs> saw um, The White Stripes. Before that, before they were oh like, my God, so I, I saw them at the very beginning mm. before they blew up before anything because yeah, they were them. on a, a band like a label showcase that my friends were playing on who yep. were Minneapolis musicians who are Minneapolis a garage musicians. rock label yeah. yes that I don't remember I can't remember I don't remember, I don't, remember I don't know I don't know perhaps. anyway I would like to correct myself with something before you play and that is just that. Uh, and if you're hearing beeping, like occasionally popping in, just settle down, everyone. It's my computer. It's notifications. So it's all fine. I, uh, I told her. I tried to tell her to <laughs> shut off all notifications. And every time that notification happens, I'm like, but well, we're moving on. It's going to be okay. <laughs> but um, I don't know how to shut it off. Whatever. So <laughs> I would like to say that I don't want to... And I love generalizing, and I do it often, but I don't want to totally generalize saying that only men talk in detail about songs and get, like, rabidly excited about it. I do think there is, like, a bit of a bro culture with it. Um, I've experienced it. I will say, plenty of my friends who are not men, we do enjoy uh, sharing songs with each other via text that we like. Mm -hmm. You know, it'll just be like, have you heard this? I really like it. You know, so we do have like our own exchange about music as well, where we share it and we talk about it, especially Liz and I. She and I like to send each other. Was there a song that she shared with you? She just shared one recently, which. Was it that uh, sound that just came up on the computer? No. Oh. (laughs) But she shared a cool song about, I think it was called like Rooftop Dancing. And it had this really cool video of people on rooftops in Brooklyn. And anyway, so 
So why is that? But you said you had to say something. Or- oh, I'm saying because I said this is like a real men thing. Oh. But I'm th- I was thinking about oh, it, and I'm like, maybe that's not really a fair you're, thing. You're, and I'm you're sure backing down a bit on your I'm backing down because I think a lot of women would raise their hand, the, the 10% that listen to this podcast versus the 75% male. I've looked at the numbers, but... That's 85. Anyway, whatever. The, ten, <laughs> the, the, the percentage of women that are listening... I'm not trying to say you don't listen to music and enjoy swapping stories about it as well, but I, anyway. Okay, I'm going to Who t- cares? Whatever. So this was supposed to be, for you avid Raw Impressions followers, this was supposed to be bake sale part four. Oh, right. That's not Doy. happening. We're not doing that. Not yet. I don't, no, don't, a- don't act like it's never going to oh, happen. No, that's right. It's not happening now. It's not happening right now. We're postponing it yes. until we can do it properly. Because yes. we've got some plans. We're actually going to... We, gonna, we we're have kind of some big have, plans for it. We are actually going to have an informative conversation regarding that LP. Yes. Involving facts. Yes. Facts. Like, not just us, like, flying off the handle and talking about Carlos Santana nope. and foot fetishes. Correct. We are actually going to speak directly to the album and i am going to describe yes. specific events in the album's making like a historical ken burns documentary this is going to be like what people like to listen to pot that's good that one is going to be what people like to listen to podcasts for which is informative right like inf- informative information <laughs> so not this this not this yes, what we not do, off the cuff not free form right it's gonna be a real tight i do love our free form podcast but i'm excited for that one so don't worry everyone bake sale part four will be coming but it might be in a couple of weeks because lou has to do a two-week uh folk composition tour and anyway we're just saying just it's all gonna happen but right now, right instead, now. we're so, going to do something else. So we were going to just almost, I think we were considering bailing on Mini Music Monday, Tiny Tunes Tuesday altogether. This well, I morning. was feeling worried because you seemed fragile. I, I was fragile. So. Mm-hmm. I am fragile. Mm-hmm. I'm the day before, I'm the day before tour agitated. Right. My palms are sweating right now. John Davis is driving here right now. Right. We're going to play a boatload of songs that I haven't played you're going to be... Many, like ever in front of setting, people. Setting up in our living room for the day. I'm going to go swim. You're going to set up in the living room. And then you leave tomorrow to go to Kingston. So, yeah, it's a lot. So, but I, but you said, can you play Clouded Age? Yeah, I just recently re-listened to that song. Okay, so And then I thought, that's a good idea because in the Bake Sale series, I played, I played Rebound. Yes. I started it off with Rebound. And then... Last week, I played a song called Together or Alone, and I didn't make this point right. during the episode, but R- Rebound and Together or Alone are like bookends. Right, of a story. Of a story, like yeah. of, a, of a rebound relationship a I romance. had. romance. I, I broke up with a longtime girlfriend and then hooked up with another, you know, wonderful woman, and, but we ended up breaking up. Mm-hmm. And uh, together or alone is kind of a, is when the I sort of realized that the relationship was ending. So I went from the beginning of the relationship with Rebound to the end of the relationship with t- Together or Alone. And when you mentioned Clouded Age, right? My first thought was I need to play the song Holding Back the Year mm-hmm. because Holding Back the Year and Clouded Age are part of a story. Another book-ended story. Yes. Um, so I've got a few things. I'm going to act like I'm playing a solo show right now and hopefully calm down a little bit because my heart. Do you want to have some more pounding. Topo Chico? A little sip? Yep. So, anyway, Holding Back the Year is named after a Simply Red song called Holding Back the Year. Oh. Do you know that song from the 80s? Yes, it's a I fantastic, love that song. I loved it too. That song like, I, is wonderful. But what I never understood about that song was what the hell it was about. No, we see, we have talked about this. Guys, if we've already done this in the podcast, let me know. We're going to do it again anyway today. But <sighs> this, is, this whole conversation is very familiar to me. Well, you've heard me play, the, you've heard me play this song a bunch of times at live shows. So maybe it's just from that. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe yeah. it is. Yeah. But if it's not, you know, who fucking cares? That's right. Do who it, it, fucking do it cares? again. It's ours. It's free form, baby. Free form? Fuck we're, it. We've been doing this for over a year, so it's, you know, we're bound to repeat ourselves, and I already have. That's I've right. already repeated myself Absolutely. a lot. Let's do it. Let's, do, let's repeat some more. So anyway, Holding Back the Year is named after the Simply Red song. It's kind of a tribute to it, because I never understood what that meant in the context of the song, Holding Back the Year. So I wrote my own song called Holding Back the Year, because I wanted it, I wanted to make my own meaning of the of the term, mm. and that term being that like I had been through a very difficult time in a relationship, mm-hmm. and then the and then it sort of calmed down, 
And the, the idea was that the relationship calmed down. Things became calm and normal again from being very turbulent because I was holding back the memories of what had caused all of the trauma. So I wrote the song about overcoming this trauma and then it being the, because I held back the experiences. Which, and I did that song and I always liked it and I thought it was like a, you know, a beginning and end to itself. Like. Mm. But then when that relationship did actually come to an end, mm-hmm. um, I had been working on a, a riff and an idea for a song for like years, years. And that song became Clouded Age. But I realized during some of the very long nights of the pandemic that that song, yet to be finished song, kind of like the Raw Impressions theme, actually. Yeah. It's been living in my head for a long time. But during the pandemic, I decided that I needed to finish this song, and I realized that it had to be an answer to Holding Back the Year and the end of the story that I had started, because Holding Back the Year was not an end actually, because it's like, you can't hold back experiences. You can do it. You can do it for your, for, for the purpose of moving forward. You can, you can, we all repress many yeah, things. I repress it. I, yeah. I think repressing things has been a big, you know, it's been a big part of my life and I think it's very effective. And you know, it's like, and in some ways, repressing things, you repress them, you repress them and then they go away. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is uh, certainly the case with keeping a lot of my bands together and a lot of experiences I've had with that. That kind of like letting things move forward and progress and heal themselves is a legitimate thing. But when it comes to something like a very deep relationship, mm-hmm. you do have to you do have to take stock of that, and it will come back mm-hmm. because it's mm-hmm. so those experiences in your heart, the things that you experience with your heart that are deep in you and that are really based in your emotions and your, your self-worth, all of those things, those things do have to really be resolved. You have to look them in the mirror and face them. You have to face yeah. them because they will find a way out. Yes. Because the, the yeah. games of the heart are very volatile. It's a very yeah. volatile thing. And so right. Right. you and I had been together for quite a while when the pandemic hit. But yeah. I felt, I was like, I had this song that I had, had been in my head for decades at this point. Right. And that had really started to take root in my mind during this previous relationship. So I realized that I needed to finish the song and I needed to make it be the end of the Holding Back the Year little duo of songs. So I'm going to try to play both of these. Yeah. And I'd like to uh, make note, okay. or just say right now, that I'm also... I'm warming up my voice and kind of practicing for, for these the shows tour. coming up. Yep. So what I'm practicing right now is being very nervous. I'm practicing being nervous. Mm. I'm practicing psyching myself out. So I will be doing that as I perform these songs. So I may, I may fuck up. Yeah. Even though I woke up this morning, I played both of these songs back to back flawlessly from when I woke up without any, but somehow... Well, the, the camera's on now. The camera's so on. Your audience is here, you know, whatever. Yeah, the love yeah. of my life is sitting here across from me, Aww. staring at me as I play this. <clears throat> and uh, so I'm a little nervous, folks. I'm shaking a little bit, but Don't I'm going to calm nervous. down. You know what? Or be nervous and work through no, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because I have to work. I have to Swat practice being nervous. Swat those nerves with the baseball bat and go like, I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I see you, nerves. I'm going to start with a song, Holding Back the Year, which was recorded. From Emo. From Emo, which was sort of my, at least in my mind, my comeback record in 2005. That's when I kind of got, I kind of got back on my feet in 2005. And, um, you know. Okay. Rolling from young, but that's a cast guy. California tear a drop of gold Maybe you were cold, yeah, so was I Holding back, holding back the year The year before the poison took its toll Major paper, thin mirror, and gold. 
eventually I finally it caught up I held you back, I grabbed you by the arm I played upon your fears But rolling down the window won't I Order up some breakfast if I can Through one. All right. There was a little froggy creeping up my throat. I heard that. I was I like, oh I, got no. fucking, I, I <laughs> went through extensive like throat clearings before, but I think just the conversation that we're having, like somehow, mm. like it, it starts turning. It starts. Yeah, like you loosening said, loosening me up. Yeah. Okay. So the now, games of the heart, not the games, the life, the reality. Mm. Okay, man. And then clouded age is from clouded reason age. to live. Clouded Age is from Reason to Live. So this is uh, Holding Back the Year Part 2. The life I was hiding in fell away Nursing a tingle, nothing to say Collecting moments, visual teasers All that I wanted, but something I needed Consequence of a clouded age, a chemical cocktail to dampen the rage. On the horizon, sun met the water. I thought I was drowning, you couldn't be bothered. Well, are you afraid of the light with nothing to hide behind? Well, our life. Left you hungry And I followed you down With my arms Open free fall Yeah, I will Come to ground Beauty I'm born for, the beauty of aging But you didn't ask for, all you were taking Mother disorder, you told all the pages I had to start over, you had to make faces Well, are you afraid of the light With nothing to hide behind? I gotta tell you I'm sorry For how it went down When you wouldn't follow the story Though I laid it all out Watching the sunset I knew I Couldn't stay to 
disaster But come on, bring the change I need But what ever after And what you believed to be You did it. If I play the, I, I, when I play this live, sometimes it like, I kind of, it kind of tears me up a little bit. Tears me up a little bit. Same spelling, T A R. Tears, tears. Yeah. But I did it. I actually got through it. It's hard for me to play those riffs when I'm, when I feel when I put myself on the spot. But it's I'm putting myself on the spot to practice. But the wonderful thing about the Falcon Plugin is that it's two of us on the spot. And John is a really, <laughs> you know, it's like we have a kind of a generous relationship with each other. So I think that we'll, yeah. it'll be nice to share being on the spot with somebody. Together. And playing all those um, songs that we wrote together, many of which are more like these collaborations between the two of, a, two of us. And although a lot of those songs are very emotional and actually written from this time period that I'm singing of with this, actually, it's very, mm. one part lullaby in particular is a very, very attached to this sort of era that I'm singing of in these two songs. <sighs> but I feel like I made it. You made it. So we're going to. You made it. And on that note, Music Mini Monday concludes. Thank you for listening.